while you're standing, we are so glad for the friendship and the ministry of Brother Michael Seidenvan and his family. Amen. I think one of the things that we really need to get back to is in the old days, people would visit each other and Amen. preach for each other and the churches would mix it up in the fellowship beyond maybe just even just a youth rally and because they were friends right, amen. and they trusted each other and they cared about each other and they believed things. They were people of like precious faith right. and surely me and Brother Seidenfeld have a very kindred spirit. We're very old time. We're very old school and uh, that doesn't insult us when people say those kinds of things about us. We kind of take it as a compliment. Yeah. Believes the message, believes the doctrine, believes holiness, believes on holding the standards in the church, and I just appreciate him. And so he drove all the way from Lawrenceburg to be with us today. I, I know him. I know he's prayed, and I want him to come today and just uh, preach. Amen. How many wants him to preach? We're just going to give him the charge today to just preach, right? Amen. To preach the word to us. How many's interested in being saved? Amen. How many wants to really preach to us, right? Whatever we need, whatever it takes. Amen. We need the Word of God. Amen. So if you need to go to the bathroom, you need to do that quickly so you can get right back in here and hear the preaching of the Word of God. God bless you, Brother Seidenfan. I'm so glad that you're here. Amen. Come and take your liberty. And if your wife's allowed to testify, you can let her do that. Why don't you testify, darling? Amen. my beautiful wife I call her my eye candy because she is sweet to the eye yes she is I was preaching I forget where I was preaching one time and uh, somebody was sitting next to her an older lady was sitting next to my wife and I was preaching and, and she tapped my wife on the shoulder and she said your daddy sure can preach <laughs> and my wife was real deceitful and she never corrected that she just said well thank you that's kind of deceiving to me, but uh, so I'm trying to look younger. This ain't working. <laughs> amen. But she is beautiful. Got some wonderful kids that love the Lord. And, amen. Just uh, I am a blessed man today. God saved me years ago, brought me out of drugs and alcohol, and I am blessed. Just like the rest of you folks. Blessed. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But it is good to be here. I love your path. You are blessed to have a wonderful leader. Amen. A wonderful... Uh, First Lady and Sister Peebler, you are blessed. Amen. Your church is blessed with talent. Amen. God's been good to you all. Amen. Never forget that. Amen. Pray for me today. Matter of fact, give God the glory because that was a good song. We ain't going to blame you for that one. That was good. But if I preach good, let's give God the glory. If I don't, I'll take the blame, all right? Amen. I preached at our church this morning. We'll be leaving here and going back, and I'm going to preach tonight. Amen. At our church again. Um, just, just feeling some good things. Y'all pray for us. We need a breakthrough in Lawrenceburg. We got a, a lot of new folks coming, and but we need a pour outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 We need revival in this end time. We don't need the, an emerging church. We don't need something that's out, uh, new revelations and all that. We need to get back to the old ways. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I told the church last Sunday, I said, you know what, all I hear, I'm getting tired of here. let's get out of the box. We're so far out of the box, we don't know how to get back in the box. Sad thing, we put Jesus in the box, the church is out of the box. Let's get Jesus out of the box and get back in the box of the church and let God have his way, amen? Amen, still gonna take prayer and fasting and worship, amen, to have revival. That's what it's gonna take, amen. Again, appreciate your good pastor. Love him, amen. Came preached for us not too long ago and uh, just did a great job. You know, you hate having guys like him to come preach because then you get up preaching, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm just a whimper snapper and he's just, uh, 
a seasoned man of God, and I appreciate him and his ministry. Amen. They are a fine bunch of folks. Second Kings in your Bible, chapter 6, if you would. Amen. If you would stand for the reading of the word today. Amen. Second Kings, chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Such a sweet, sweet presence of the Lord here today. Man, the worship and everything has just been beautiful. I can't wait to go back home and preach tonight and just get, amen, there in Lawrenceburg again. I'm going to take some of the back with me. Y'all have blessed me. Amen. amen. I have come and I've been blessed. Amen. Y'all have blessed me. Amen. And your worship and uh, your reaching out for the things of God here today. Amen. Second Kings chapter 6. I'm not used to holding these microphones, so uh, amen. I'll try to stay into it. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. Everybody say besieged. besieged. Amen. We need a little bit louder than that. Come on now. Besieged. besieged. All right. We need some class participation today. All right. All right. Amen. You for that? All right. Everybody say besieged. besieged. All right. There was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to pay 80 pieces of silver for a donkey's head, would you? If I, go to, if I go to Kroger, I'm not looking for donkey heads. I'll tell you that right now. Hamburgers high enough a pound, I'm not paying 80 uh, pieces of silver for a, a donkey's head. And the fourth part of a cab of dove dung was for, for five pieces of silver. Amen, doves dung, five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, whence or how shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor, out of the wine press. Amen, I can't help you. How am I going to help you out of the wine floor or the, or the wine press, the barn floor? There ain't nothing there either. It's, it's empty. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, and he passed by up on the wall. And the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth with up on his flesh. Amen. I want to preach just for, a, for just for a little bit, amen, some signs that there might be a famine in your life. Some signs that there might be a famine going on in your life today. Amen. I, we don't need famines in this end time. We need a mighty, move, prospering, amen, spirit of God. We don't need famines. It's not time for somebody to backslide now. Amen. It's not time to get quiet now. It's not time to shut our mouth. It's not time for the church to draw back. It's time for the church to go forward. Amen. It's not time for famines in the church. It's time, amen, that we have Holy Ghost apostolic revival. Amen. So I want to talk about some signs. There might be a famine in your life today. Amen. In the church. Amen. So let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity, the privilege to be here. I pray that you move in this house today. I pray that, pray that you talk to us, minister. Thank you for the precious worship, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you that you have entered this room, that you have come in in a mighty way. I pray that you'd help me preach your word. I pray, Lord, that we would reach somebody today. Lord, you said we're labors together with you. Lord, reach those that are backslidden, those that are growing cold. I pray there'll be a fresh fire, fresh anointing in every heart, in every individual of the child of God this place. I pray that somebody would repent of their sins today. Let somebody be baptized in Jesus' name. Someone filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And we ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Could you put your Bibles down beside you just for a moment? And clap. Let's clap our hands one more time. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible says the city was being besieged. Besieged is not attacked. Besieged is not being come upon fiercely or mightily. Besieged mean it was uh, the enemy was round about them. Besieged again is not just a, a plumbing or a coming in or a hammering. 
Amen. Besieged means the enemy has set up camp around about them. And they did that for a reason. They were stopping anything from coming in. And they were stopping anything from coming out. Amen. They wasn't going in and they wasn't declaring war or nothing like that. They was just, amen, sitting on the outskirts of the camp. Amen. On the kingdom there. And they were saying, you know what? Amen. We're here to intimidate you. We're here to, amen, stop anything from coming out of your city. And we're here to stop any supply from coming into your city. And I'm here to tell the church today, amen, there's times that the enemy don't come in, amen, like a flood. There is times like that, that he just sits on the outside and he tries to intimidate the church. And if he can keep anything from being moving inside of the church and keep anything from flowing outside of the church, amen, he's done his job. But I'm here to tell you today, it's not time for the church to be damned up and shut up. Amen. It's time that we say, hey, amen, we're not going to settle here. We're not going to be satisfied. Amen. Being intimidated by the enemy. Amen. We're going to open the floodgates. We're going to open the gates of the church. Amen. We're going to come out fighting. Amen. This end time. Hey, I'm tired of being intimidated as a pastor and a preacher and a child of God. I'm here to have revival in this end time. Amen. So they were being besieged. They cut off the supplies. Amen. They cut off anything from coming in and coming out. And that's what the enemy would do. He would try to stop, amen, some inflow or outflow of the Holy Ghost. If you look at the Garden of Eden, what a beautiful picture of the church that is. Amen. The Garden of Eden was set up. Amen. And God, the Bible says that, matter of fact, it wasn't a garden in, it was a garden in it. It wasn't a garden of it. The Bible said God placed a garden eastward in Eden. So when Eden, that thing, whatever it was, garden in the east of it. I mean, the Bible said that he created man and placed him. He created him outside of the garden and placed him in the garden. Amen. What a beautiful type of the church that is. Amen. You know what? Everything that we need, everything that Adam needed was in the garden. Everything that you need today is in the church. Amen. A man of God in the church. Somebody to preach truth. Amen. The blessings of God in the church. Amen. The flowing of the Holy. Everything we need. Amen. I don't know about you, but I wasn't born in the church. I was outside of the garden. Amen. But God brought me to church and breathed life into me. And I became a living soul today and being baptized and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said there was a river that run into the garden. And when they got into the garden, the Bible said it broke up into four heads. Yeah. Amen. So it was a pivot point. When he got into the garden, it split up. And that's what the Holy Ghost is. It comes into the house of God. Right. Amen. But that lets me know, you know what we are? We are rivers today. Yeah. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Out of your belly shall flow rivers yeah. of living water. Yeah. This he spake of the Holy Ghost, which had not yet been given. Amen. But let me know on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, there was 120 rivers there. Amen. When that river run into the, when it ran into the garden, it broke up into the four heads. Amen. Rivers went out of that garden, the Bible says. Yeah. It flowed in and it came out. Amen. You know what it did? It fed other countries. And those rivers, amen, produced life wherever it went, wherever that water touched. Yeah. I mean, grass we grow and trees we grow. And that's where you and me come in. Amen. When the Spirit of God would flow into the church and the Holy Ghost would flow in us. Everywhere we go, we ought to produce something in our life, on our jobs, in our homes. Amen. We ought to be everywhere we go where it's dry, where it's desolate. Amen. Where the backslider and the drunk is. Amen. We ought to produce something. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But it's not time for the church to get damned up and backed up. Amen. Besieged and, and be set in. It's time for the church to go forth. Amen. 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 So let's look at this story a little bit further. And again, Satan would like to cut us off and amen, intimidate us and shut us off. Amen. But I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be intimidated by the enemy. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Again, Verse 24, and it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all the host. Amen. Gathered all the, his host and went up and besieged Samaria. Amen. Notice, what, notice how it was. The famine was so great, they began to sell and eat unthinkable things. When there's nothing coming in and nothing coming out of your life, you will do things that you thought you would never do. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever been, ever been backslid? You'll do things that you said you would never do. Amen. I told our church this morning, amen, as, as apostolics, as church folks, we are so hard on the drunks and the alcoholics. We say, you know what? That, that is a sin and they're going to hell. And, and, and that's true. Don't get me wrong. 
But a lot of times the alcohol and the drugs is not their issue. That's the medication for their issue. There's always something deeper than the drugs and the alcohol. I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, Jesus, the, uh, when John the Baptist, here's what John the Baptist said when Jesus came down to the shores of the Galilee that day, or the shores of that Jordan. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away what? The sin. Right. Not sins. That's right. The sin of the world. Right. In other words, we're all born with an Adamic nature. Every one of us, amen, we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Why? Because of that Adamic nature, amen, of what, amen, Adam did. But here comes Jesus Christ, amen, to take away the sin, that Adamic nature of the world, amen. And when you were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, amen, you took on that second Adam. You've been born again by the water and the Spirit. So the sin of the world is taken off of you, amen. And that sin will produce sins. That's what, that's what that sin nature does. It produces sin. That's right. Alcohol, drugs. Amen, I'm here to tell somebody. I don't know what you're going. I don't know why I'm going here today. Amen, I'm here to tell somebody. Amen, I know you got some issues and I know you got some problems and people are looking down their nose at you. Amen, but I'm wise enough to know there's something deeper than what you're going through. Maybe it's abuse. Maybe it's hard times. Amen, maybe it's a struggle that you're going through and you've got some medication in your life. I'm here to tell you today, I know a painkiller. Amen, I know a drug that's better than any drug. Amen, oh yeah, his name is Jesus. Let me warn you, though, there's some side effects to this Jesus. Yeah. It'll make you clap your hands. Right. Make you shout. Hey, Amen. It won't give you a headache. It'll make you talk in tongues, sis. Yeah. Hey, man, it'll make you dance. It'll make you say, take me to the water and let me get baptized. Hey, Amen. I'm talking about Jesus today. Hey, Amen. They were selling donkey heads because there was a famine. Donkey heads sold for 80 pieces of silver. Now, I'm a city boy, okay? I had a guy at our church in Lawrenceburg. So moving to Lawrenceburg was really like coming out of Louisville to Lawrenceburg for me. That was, that was Mayberry, okay? Because I grew up in Louisville. And uh, so I'm pastoring in Mayberry now. And that's growing. I mean, we got our own super Walmart and all kinds of things. We're doing good. And so, and I got this country guy in the church. And, and he, anybody like squirrel? Oh, the Lord. You hunted for her? No. no. Me neither. They don't sell the Kroger. I don't eat it. He invited us over to eat some squirrel and gravy. You about like that? Look, y'all like, mm, I'm hungry now. And, uh, and again, I'm city boy. And, and I thought, who in the world would eat that stuff? And he thought it was the best thing. He invited me over for squirrel and gravy. Being a pastor, you know, you do the right things. Yeah, I'll try it. Man, I tried it, and he pulled out that big old, he had a big spoon and pulled that squirrel, and it looked like a cat laying in there or what. I was like, my goodness. He said, boy, that's going to be good, ain't it? My kids are going. And I was like, no, you know, I'll taste it, and I taste it. And, you know, I didn't say it tastes like chicken and all that. I just... I said, well, I'm sure you got to get used to the taste. So I didn't need it. These folks are eating donkey heads. Hey, man, they're eating something that uh, doesn't sound good. And, and I believe there's a lot of types in here that I want to look at today, okay? Some signs that you might have a famine in your life, that you might be, amen, dissolving. You might be backsliding. You might be hurting. Hey, man, you might be going through some things today. Hey, man, if you look at a donkey head, and a donkey is a type of a stubbornness. Whenever you get stubborn with God, hey amen, there there's a sign that you've got a famine going on. Whenever you get stubborn with a man of God, there's a sign there's a famine going on in your life. You've been besieged. There's nothing coming in. Matter of fact, you probably aren't praying. And, and, and I, don't know, I don't know why the Lord would give me this to preach today. I really don't. Amen. But I'm here to tell somebody. I want to see somebody, amen, say, you know what? It's going to get better than this. Amen. It's going to get better than this. Amen. I'm going to do, I, I am better than this. Amen. I am better than this. I'm not a stubborn individual. I'm not stubborn with God. I'm going to open myself up. Amen. God, have your liberty in my life. Amen. I'm here to tell you, anytime that you get stubborn with God or a man of God and the things of God, you better check yourself. You might be in a famine. You might be on your way. Amen. To a devil's hell. I know that's old time preaching, but you better check yourself. 
Amen. A stubbornness. Amen. Matter of fact, we gotta be we gotta be careful. There's a Jezebel spirit that's going around in the world right now. Jezebel is a manipulator. What do you want, Ahab? I'll get it for you, baby. I'll manipulate, I'll control, I'll move things out of the way, I'll take care of it. You'll have what you want. And a matter of fact, even those those things get into mamas. That that Jezebel spirit will get into a mama. It will. When a mama tries to control her son, well, why don't you come over to my house for dinner? Don't go to her house today. You don't have to go home and eat. She's probably going to burn your dinner anyway. Come over to mama's house. Mama will take care of you. Hey, man, mama, you got to be careful. you gotta let, you got to let your babies go sometime. That's a manipulating spirit. Hey, man, and, and I'm not talking about just mamas. That gets in the church also. Yeah. Matter of fact, there's people that are such manipulators with friends and people around them. Even a pastor try to manipulate the pastor. Hey, Amen. You've got to be careful of that spirit. Hey, Amen. Because that same spirit will try to manipulate God. If you'll do this, then I'll do this. And if you do this, God, I'll do this. And then I'll go to the altar. And then I'll praise you. And then I'll worship you. That is a Jezebel spirit. Hey, Amen. That spirit's got to go out of the church. Hey, Amen. He is sovereign. He is right. He is holy and just. Hey, Amen. God will do what He wanted on Hey Amen. You got to be careful of that stubborn spirit that would come upon you. You might be in a place of a famine, church. Hey Amen. That stubborn mentality. Hey Amen. It'll cost you when you got a stubborn mentality. I'll show them I won't go to church. Who's that hurt? I had a lady coming to my office. I'm just going to tell them my, some of my saints. Matter of fact, you know what? I told my church the other day, we was having the uh, beginning of the service. Uh, we run about 70, 60, 70 folks, like, something like that. And I told the church, I said, you know what? I'm probably just pastor about 25 people. There's nothing worse than a preacher come up and say, how many you run? I don't know. Some weeks it'll be up and some it'll be down. Some weeks it'll be up and some weeks it'll be down. But, but I do tell them usually, I said, I pastor about 25 people. <laughs> Everybody won't let you pastor them. Right. Everybody won't let you be their pastor. Right. And this lady coming to my office, I hope this is okay. Is this okay? Okay. <laughs> this is the Lord then. <laughs> she sat across my desk from me, her and her husband. And he didn't want to be there. He, she made him be there. <laughs> Brother Sidon, Fiden, yeah, what's going on? If you didn't preach it so hard, we'd have a full church. You need, you need to cut back on some of that stuff that you've been preaching on. And he sat there like this. He didn't say a word. Fin finally, I got tired of it. I said, you know what your problem is? And I looked at him. Because I wasn't talking to her. I was through with her. She had no. She was out of order. He should never let that happen. I said, sir, let me tell you what your problem is. God wants to use you. But God can never use you till that comes under subjection. Amen. There's a manipulating spirit in this hour, brother. Amen. And, and, and if we're not careful, that same lady tries to manip, manip, manipulate God. I mean, she tries to manipulate scriptures and turn scriptures to her own liking. And holiness is not important anymore. And none of this stuff is important anymore. And does it, is it a heaven or hell issue? Does it really matter? It still matters. Amen. It's still holiness and righteousness and the way of truth. Amen. I'm here to tell you. Amen. You've got to be careful this in time. You can't manipulate God. You can't manipulate the word of God. You better get in there and hold on to it. Amen. If we got any visitors, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. I'm really not sorry because this is still in the Word of God. <laughs> I tell our church all the time, if I offend you, I'm sorry. If the Word of God offends you, I'm not sorry. I can't help that. Amen. So they were selling donkey heads, stubbornness. Amen. I believe God wants to... Well, I don't know why I'm preaching, but I feel there's some stubborn here. Maybe one or two. I'm not the pastor. I didn't come here to be. I've come here today to see somebody. All right, man. Follow their faith. All right, yeah. Yeah. God, you're talking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, when you're speaking to me, Lord, all the things right. Yeah. We've got to be careful. We have made the mistake, and we quote scriptures so wrong all the time. We tell people. Here's what we tell people: The Lord won't put on you more than you can bear. Where's that at? Have you ever told anybody that? That's not scripture. That is not scripture. The Bible said he won't allow you to be tempted above what you can bear. Because if you are, he'll make a way of escape for you. In other words, young person, if you're doing a wrong thing with you and another boy, or you, young lady, young boy in a situation, amen, ma'am, sir, whoever, 
I mean, you're, you're on a job, sir, and, and a lady comes in. I mean, God will make a way of escape for that. Right. He won't allow you to be tempted above. Right. He won't put you in the corner and say there's no way out of it. Right. He says he'll allow a way of escape. But there's a difference in temptation and trial, though. Right. Amen. We tell people, well, the Lord won't put on you more than you can bear. Oh, yes, he will. Yeah. Oh, yes, he will. Because if he didn't, amen, when every time I got to a problem, I can say, you know what, I'm going to be all right because I'll be able to bear this. He won't put on me more than I can bear. Oh, yes, he will. There comes a time when you say, you know what, I'm about to lose my mind. I'm about to have a heart attack. I, ain't, I don't know what's going to happen here. And that's when God said, hey, that's when you need me when you can't bear it anymore. And God does allow you to go through something. Even as a pastor, I, and people, well, the Lord won't put on you more than you can bear. Oh, yes, he has. I need your help here. Because this is more than I can bear. And we quote the scripture so wrong. He will put on you more than you can bear. The scripture said he won't allow you to be tempted. Difference in a temptation and a trial. Because those trials, and somebody, maybe you're going through a trial today. And you're saying, I can't handle it. Hey man, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Maybe the Lord's brought you to a point in, your lo in the lowest point of your life to say, you know what, you need me. You can't bear it alone. You can't do it. You need God. Hey, man, I need Jesus today. I need Jesus. I need Jesus, church. We quote scripture so wrong. You sh the truth shall make you free. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty close, too. But that's not true. The truth will make you free. But what's the first part of it say? You shall know the truth. Know the truth. And it will make, the truth is an absolute. Right. Truth is always going to be there. Yeah. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to set somebody else free because they believe it. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to set this person over here free. Why? Because they believe it. It's an absolute. Yeah. Amen. That's where the church has to come in. And you know what? We've got to know the truth and it will make us free. Amen. We've got to know that he's a healer. We've got to know that he's a deliverer. We've got to know that he wants to give us a revival. He's not a has-been. He's not a God of yesterday. Amen. He's not a God in him and it's not going to show up tomorrow. He's the God of right now. Amen. In Revelation, he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first, the last, which is and was and is to come. The Almighty. Amen. 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 The second thing that you might want to think about, maybe you're in a famine. The Bible said they were selling dove's dung. I ain't going to get nasty here, but I think we all know where that's, what that talks about. Right? Have you ate yet? <laughs> dove dung. Now you got to think about dove dung. What is it? We know what it is. Dove represents the Holy Ghost, right? Yeah. Now, dove dung is not where the dove is. Dove is dove dung is where the dove's been. Right. It's flown away. It's dove dung. It's gone. Amen. You might be in a famine if all you talk is about is what used to be. Yeah. That's right. All right? We might be in a famine as individuals if we talk about how we used to work around the altar. How we used to pray. I once was a prayer warrior. Amen. You got to be careful because you know what? If dove dung, dove dung is there, amen, and that's what's being sowed, I believe it's a type. Amen. Let's us know it's not what's present, but it's what once was. Amen. Amen. The dove is already gone. Amen. You know what? Amen. We need something happening in this hour. Amen. And, and, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to say nothing against this church. Amen. Man, the worship and the prayer and everything's been beautiful. Amen. But if we're not careful, sir, amen, let me break it down to you, ma'am, sir, individuals. Amen. You better check yourself. Amen. Don't talk about what you used to do and how you used to pray and how you used to fast. It's time to step up and say, hey, I'm fasting now. I'm praying now. I want revival now. I'm backing up the pastor now. I'm having a... Amen. And if all you do is talk about what used to happen. And I told our church this. We might be in a famine. If all we talk about is what, what happened 10 years ago. This is our 25th year in Lawrenceburg. You preached there and had revivals. And, amen. Through those years. Amen. But it's not, it's not the end of it, brother. We're going, to have, we're going to have 25 more of the Lord Terry's. Amen. I believe that this promises to be one of the best years for the church ever. I really do. 07 was hard for me. I don't know about you. It was hard for me. 
And I know when you come out of stuff like that, God's going to bless. Amen. God's going to move and God's going to bless. I mean, notice what else has happened. Amen. There, there, there's, there's a, they're eating a donkey head, which is a type of stubbornness. Dove's dung, where the spirit once was, where the dove once was, not where it is. They're reflecting all they're doing. Is, amen. The past and the past and the past. Amen. I'm talking about apostolic revival right now. Amen. So he does. So what happens? He's look. Look at uh, look at verse twenty six and seven. And as the king of Israel was passing by up on the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, "Help, my lord, O king!" And he said, "The Lord do not help thee. When shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor, or out of the wine press? The barn floor is empty. They got a twofold dilemma here. The barn floor is empty, and the the wine press is empty. Amen. The barn floor where the wheat is kept, where the harvest is, it's empty." When a church begins to eat up all their harvest, there's no new influx and in seasons of harvest. I'm checking myself right now as a pastor in Lawrenceburg. Hey man, I want fresh harvest, don't you? Church, it's not time for a famine this hour. It's time for a sovereign move of the Holy Ghost. Who's responsible for that? It's us. It's us. Hey Amen, it's us. I want the angels of the Lord in my church, brother. Yes. Matter of fact, you hear people say this all the time too, and I don't mean to just bring up scripture people quote wrong, but my my guardian angel was with me. Anybody ever heard somebody say that? I got people at work, and I've heard people say, well, your guardian angel was with you. And those people are just the, the most vile sinners you've ever seen. And you're thinking, what? The Bible says the angels of the Lord camp about those that what? Fear him. Hey Amen. We, we want the angels of God in the church. There's got to come a fresh fear of God. So we need a fresh fear of God. Yeah, amen. My kids don't know what it's like to fear God. Right. It's not their fault. Generation before them. Yeah. My generation. Right. We're taking church so fast. Yes. Here we are again. Going through the motions. Yeah. Amen. Doing the same old, same old. Right. Since you said it. Amen, miracles and signs. I remember, amen, the pastor saying, to everybody, but if, you, if you're not prayed up, you might want to leave right now. If you're not prayed up, you might want to get to the prayer room, get on your knees and cry out to God. Amen, we're going to cast a demon out of somebody around here. Amen, I remember those days, brother. I remember my grandma when she didn't, she didn't have nothing in her cabinets or nothing like that. I mean, she didn't stay home and worried about it. She said, it's time to go to the house of God. I mean, she got to the altar. Amen. But before she got home, somebody on the way out stopped her and said, hey, here's $20. Don't know why. God has told me to give this to you. Amen. Why? We was in tune with God. We was in tune with the Spirit. It's not time to be besieged. It's not time to back up. Amen. We need that power again. We need that anointing again. Amen. But it comes down to you and me. Say, hey, there might be a famine in my life. Have I gotten stuck? Stubborn, am I dwelling on the path? No, God can do miracles today. Healings and signs and wonders can be performed. Here's the church right now. Amen. The barn floor is empty. The wine press representing the Holy Ghost. There's no Holy Ghost flowing anymore. Hey, I'm just preaching to me if that's all right. Y'all are welcome to listen. Church, I want a move of God. Yes. I want my kids to have what I talk, what I talk about and preach about. I want my kids to see it. Miracles. Miracles. Amen. You know what? You talked about how Israel forgot. And the Lord's blessed us. I mean, he's healed my wife of cancerous cells. I remember going to the doctor and they, and they thought she had breast cancer. And here I am, a pastor. I'm like, Lord, what do you, what do you, what do you? She said, I was going to pastor this church. She was going to have revival and things like that. Now this, what are you thinking, God? And she comes out and said, doctor said everything's okay. My shallowness. Amen, my shallowness. Matter of fact, we got faith all messed up. We think faith is I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That's not. Faith is relationship. Paul said, I kept the faith. Even though he's been shipwrecked. Hanging onto a board, washing up on. And how many times, how many nights did he spend in the deep? The Bible said, Amen, out in the water on a board. Days. Washed up on shore, probably shriveled up and dried up from the salt water. Amen, he washed up on shore. Amen, he gets on his feet. You know what? He doesn't stop. He goes and preaches the word. He said, I kept the faith, Timothy. I kept it. My wife, she went and prayed for this lady, and this lady had cancer in her body. And one day the Lord told my wife, 
instead of anointing her with oil, just pour oil all over her. He told my wife, he said, when you go in today, you just pull the oil. And my wife went in, this lady wasn't in the church, and my wife said, this might sound crazy to you, but the Lord told me to do this. The Lord told me to just pour oil all over you. And I remember not too long after that, that lady passed away. And my wife, she struggled with it. She said, I know I heard from God, brother. I know the Lord told me he was going to do that. And now he takes her. Now I'm confused. Now I'm, I'm trying to figure out this God. You know what? I can look at my wife today and say, you know what? You are a remarkable woman. Because you went and prayed for her over and over and over. Keeping the faith means this. Even though the miracle don't come, that you still believe God can do it. Yes. When she died, you still believe that He was able to do it. Yes. That's keeping the faith. Amen. Amen. I don't care if you're dying of cancer today. I'm still coming to the house of God, lifting my hand, and you can heal me. You can heal me. If you do or not, you can. That's keeping the faith. Church, it's time in this hour that we learn to keep the faith. Yeah. Amen. We need it. Got to have some faith. I believe God wants to mold us and shape us. I'm apostolic from top of my, top of my bald head to the soles of my feet. Raised under Brother Vitito, Brother Moran. Old timers, hard. The kind, you know, when your hair got down over years, they don't do that. They couldn't do that now, but when it did, time for a haircut, boy. I'm like, so when you, you went to church and you thought it was long, you was like, And then when you saw him, you walked fast. <laughs> but I love that man. Yeah. This day I love that man. Yeah. Brother told come preach for me not too long. I still get nervous when he's there. <laughs> I'm checking my hair still. I ain't got none. <laughs> but I made up in my mind that was my man of God. Yeah. And I trusted him. Yeah. I trusted him. He was my high priest. He was the one that would tell me what God was saying to the church. Yeah. Amen. He was my high priest. He was the, amen. He was the one that would tell me, amen, boy, you got to get it right. You don't want to go that way. Don't fall down. Amen. Get up and worship. I mean, you're not doing enough. Get involved. Yeah. Thank God for a man of God. Yes. Yes. And I believe the Lord wants to shape us today. The story of a master sculptor, and I might have told this before when I was here. Am I, am I going too long? Am I okay? master sculptor told his apprentice, he said, drag that big piece of marble in here, big old piece of marble, and it was on one of those uh, big roller things. And, amen, so the apprentice brings it in, puts it there, and he says, what do you see in that? That big black piece of marble, what do you see? And that sculptor looked at his apprentice, he said, I see a, a stallion with flaring nostrils and a flowing mane in a run. He said, you see that? that? He said, how are you going to get a stallion with flaring nostrils and a flowing mane and a run? How are you going to get it out of that, out of that, that ugliness? He said, I'm going to take my hammer. I'm going to take my chisel. And everything that doesn't look like a stallion with the flowing mane and flaring nostrils, he said, I'm going to chip it away. I believe the Lord's here today. And you're looking at yourself, well, God, what are you going to do with me? And that's why you're in so much pain today. The Lord's chipping at you. The Lord's saying, you know what? I'm going to make you like me. Yeah. And that's why the trials come. And that's why the hard times come. And that's why the troubles come. It's just God chipping his way. Amen. Why? He's trying to make you more and more and more like him. Amen. I want God to shape me, don't you? Hope I'm not born just quiet. I hope you're here today. Amen. I hope you're here today. Amen. We've got to be careful, church. There's a lot of junk being preached today. I'm about done. I'm just, I'm just going anywhere right now. I'm sorry. A lot of junk being preached. Prosperity. You give $10, the Lord will bless you with $1,000. That's hogwash. I've tried that. <laughs> Amen. We've, we've, we've all had that kind of prayer. Lord, it's all I got. And, and you know what? Your kids stay healthy and your wife stay healthy. That's, that's a blessing. All kinds of junk, prosperity, and all kinds of stuff being preached. Matter of fact, why don't they go to Africa and preach that? It don't work there. 
Why don't you go to the jailhouse and preach your prosperity message? Because it don't work there. But the gospel works everywhere. The gospel will work in Africa. The gospel will work in the court, in, 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 in the jailhouse. The gospel will work in the church today. Amen. It's still repentance and baptism in Jesus' name, the filling of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of stuff. Well, you know what, you, you, Brother Seidenfine, you little whimper snapper, you know what, you, you talking all that stuff, and I might have a family, but I, I got a nice checkbook, and my cars are nice, and I think God's okay with what I'm doing. Don't kid yourself. Right. Don't kid yourself. Don't judge your spirituality by that. Right. You know what, Ishmael looked like Isaac. He had hands. Right. He had legs like Isaac. Right. That's right. Matter of fact, he brought a lot of problems. And still is today. Amen. Just because it looks like Isaac doesn't mean it's a blessing. Doesn't mean it's from God. Amen. Matter of fact, when all was said and done, Sarah said, you know what? Get that bond servant and her son and get them out of my house. It's laughing at my blessing and I'm tired of it. Amen. He sit there and he laughed at Ishmael on the day of his birthday. He laughed at him. Amen. I'm here to tell somebody, you got a lot of mistakes in your life and you're saying you're thinking it's the blessing of God and they're laughing at the miracle that God wants to do. It's a, you need to say, hey, get out of my life. Amen. God wants to bless me. God wants to use me in ministry. Amen. And teaching all... We stand to our feet. I'm about done. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I am talking to somebody. I don't know this church. I don't know you. I mean, I know y'all, but I don't know y'all. But I know the Lord wants to take somebody to another level. I believe somebody's in a famine, brother. I believe I might be in a famine today. The Bible says I can lay hands on people and they can recover. The Bible says I can lay hands on people and devils be cast out. Do I believe that? I believe that. Hey man, if you got a need today, why don't you come? Hallelujah. Are you backslid? There's a peril of a divided heart. You got to be careful when your heart's divided. That comes from Satan. Matter of fact, Jesus was doing miracles one day. And they say that he does it in the name of Beelzebub. And Jesus looked at him and said, are y'all crazy? He said, a, a city divided its, against itself, it can't stand. He said, a house divided against itself, it can't stand. And he said, Satan divided against himself cannot stand. Notice what he does. He starts at a city. He goes to a home. And then he breaks it down to an individual. A divided heart can't stand. And he broke it down to an individual to show us something in teaching there. Because an individual that's divided affects a home. And it brings it affect the church, brother. Division comes in the church because homes are divided right. and individuals are divided. That's, right. that's where it starts. I want a whole heart to God today. I want the miracles. You might be in a famine, sir. This altar's open, would you come? I hope I haven't missed it. Don't sit there in your stubbornness, sir, ma'am, and say, you know what? I'm okay. I'm not going today. I'm not going to the altar. I'm all right. That donkey, that stubbornness cost a lot of money, it cost 80 pieces of silver. That's a fortune. Stubbornness that cost you. I want revival. Lord, give me revival. Lord, you're not a has been. You're still powerful. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. Gomer was divided. She had a divided heart. She couldn't decide. She couldn't decide whether to stay with Jose or run around or whatever. But one day, Jose found her on the auction block, and in the peril of her divided heart, Amen. Jose said, "Hey, I'll take you back. I'll give you another chance." Come on! It was a type of Israel that had a divided heart. 
and God was showing through Jose and Gomer, hey, I know you've been cheating around on me. I know you've been messing around on me. I know your heart's divided. Whether it be a good godly mother, whether it be, amen, a harlot. Come on, there's a peril of a divided heart right now. You might be in a famine, sir. That a famine will affect your children. Come on, they, said they started to devour their children and boil them and eat them. It affected the next generation. It began to wipe the next generation out. Oh, we don't need a famine. We need a word of God in this hour. Every secret part, oh hearted, in love with you, with my whole heart, I'm going to love you, with my whole 